Hello and welcome to Rally Point, our squadcast, and this is going to be episode two, where we talk about squad, the universe, the features, the games, and everything that the community is talking about at the minute when it comes to squad. In this episode, we've rolled out the red carpet. We've hired the tumbling midgets, the go-go dancers, we've held the paparazzi back. We're going to welcome one of the squad devs, Chucky. I was nearly calling you Chucky Egg then, I don't know why, we'll call you Chuck. Who's the lead animator, and he's the manager for squad. And we're going to be asking him a few questions about what his role is for squad, what he's looking for in the future and the challenges that he's currently facing. And I'm just going to slap Doc on the wrist because I'm getting feedback in my headphones. Doctor! Oh, my bad. Right, so what I thought we'd do is before we start off, just to say a quick hello. If each one of you just want to say a quick hello and give us a little bit of an introduction on when you started gaming and let's take it from there, really. So who wants to jump in first? I'll go first. Um... Hey guys, uh, I, I'm Chuck. I'm um, yeah. As uh, as Para has uh, given um, that little introduction of me, I'm I'm the lead animator and one of the managers over at uh, Off World Industries, the makers of Squad. Um, I'm holding yeah, the paparazzi I... back. I'm holding them back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm yeah. I'm I'm uh, I'm you know about 26, and uh, I uh, I guess my, my gaming history really uh, really began with with like Nintendo. Uh, I'm. I'm one of those guys that, that began with uh, with like the um, the N64 and uh, and and the first uh, was the 3D Zelda and uh, and uh, you know Smash Brothers and things like that. But I guess uh, things have slowly evolved uh, to to more PC gaming and um, yeah, like I think I remember uh, those first uh, Half Life mods I really got into the games like Specialists and what was uh, it on PC? Mod. Yeah, yeah, it was on PC. Um, yeah, and, and then obviously the first Counter Strike as well. So, I guess my my mm. modding background began from there. Uh, you know, just you know, dropping in custom weapons and, and skins and stuff like that. But then, yeah, eventually grew once once Battlefield Two came out and uh, and Project Reality got started. Um, and that's when I began my modding, I, I my mean, actual modding career uh, with with PR. Um, originally as a, as a sprite. Um, artist like I, I was the one that actually created uh, all the all the custom like kit icons. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, but back in Battlefield Two, there was only like six different classes, and they all had, uh, you know, fairly, uh, fairly rudimentary icons like like a rocket for the. Uh, that seems uh, so long ago guy. now, though. But it, but it's just such a long time ago. It feels like it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that's that's almost eleven years ago now. It's like I think it was a two thousand five release for the, the first Battlefield two. Um, and yeah, so so like my first job really at, at at PR was was to create custom kit icons for all the different classes we had, like rifleman and uh, an officer and things like that. Uh, and and from there, it really just grew to to different positions like um, texture artist and eventually animator. Well. Tough job following that, eh? Um, I guess I'll go. I'm uh, I'm Ross. Uh, I'm 26. Uh, I'm a console guy essentially, but uh, taking a liking to PC gaming. So you know, hate me if you want. You know what I mean? Console Whatever. peasant. Yeah, that's it, mate. My description uh-huh. in TS peasant. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember playing the the Mega Drive. You know, uh, PlayStation One, all those good sort of, good sort of consoles. But other than that, same as everyone else, really. <laughs> Well, you've come so, over yeah. to the right side. From well, you, you still play well, console? Uh, yeah, I do, mate. Yeah, Xbox One. <laughs> not no, 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 PlayStation Four. So you know. Get out, doors over there. That's it, mate. That's it. <laughs> Look, you want a way out. What about you, Doc? Um, I'm Doc. I'm uh, 25. Been around, uh, been around PC gaming for a while. I actually started on PC gaming when I was a kid. I remember as a little kid. Um, the original Ghost Recon, the original Rainbow Sixes came out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's that's the games I grew up on, man. Kind of got away from PC for a little while. Went to the dark side. Went over to uh, the consoles for a little yeah, bit. And, uh, you did. Found my way back over. Right? No, I, I found my way back over though. Um, I got an Xbox One still, but I, I never touched the damn thing. It just kind of sits there. I used to play a lot of RTS games as well, like Age of Empires and stuff. Yeah, them sort well, of that games. was a classic. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Counter Strike yeah, yeah. on playing on a laptop. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like <laughs> the original Rogue Spear, Rainbow Sixes, man. Those are the days. Yeah. Oh, actually, my my first PC game was actually it was uh, it wasn't Half Life. It was actually um, Red Alert, like Ooh, the, the original. Yeah, yeah. 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 another Ooh, classic. Yes. What about you, oh, Chucky? Uh, Blitz, sorry. Um, 
funny you just mentioned Command and Conquer Red Alert because that was one of the sort of the first games I remember playing a lot. I mean, um, as a young kid, I remember staying up late. I'm a, I've got an older brother, ten years old, and I'd stand over his shoulder while he played Doom on you know, the original on PC. Uh, and it went from there, really. The old um, NES, Sega Mega Drive, and then I had a bit of a break till PlayStation One came out. I'm the same console peasant originally. Yeah, um, I was as well. Shh. And then and it was like sort of more of a casual thing, and then Call of Duty 4 came out, and it just changed everything for me, gaming wise. Like that was off it, like multiplayer. Um, and then sort of windled my way back into PCs. I've always been an MMO guy as well, um, playing various MMOs across my time. So that's pretty much it, really. Quite casual up until a couple of years ago, and then I, I really started getting into it, the multiplayer side. So I've. Really. Um... I'm uh, 43, and as I was telling some of the lads here, my <clears> first, well, I don't think you can even call it a console, a console. it was the ZX80, which came out in 1980, believe it or not, <laughs> and it had 1K memory, so you can imagine the quality of the graphics there, and the year after, when you could buy a RAM pack, we had the ZX81, games that had a load of zeros and a 1, and you press the space bar, so that's how far I go back to gaming, and then I've literally owned... Pretty much everything up to that. There was the Acorn Electron, the BBC Micro, the Atari ST, Amiga, Commodore 64, Specky, Specky, uh, was it Specky 48? You name it, all the way up through the consoles, up until the point where I think Counter Strike had just come out, and I um, went to a PC, like a coffee, a coffee bar somewhere, and they had some laptops hooked up, and uh, <laughs> they, they said, "Do you, you want to have a go of this?" That, that was it. The second I realised that. I could sit next to my mate and play a first-person shooter against each other. That was it for me. That was like, you know, the crack cocaine button had been <laughs> squirted up my nose. <laughs> and honestly, it's never, I've never looked back. And in fact, I probably spend too much time gaming than I should because for my job, I'm using the same computer I use for gaming. So when I get a little bit of downtime, it's like, oh, just a bit of squad. You know, just 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. Uh, and I actually need to reel it in a little bit. So... That's where I've come from. From the beginning, I'm probably be playing a console when I pop my clogs. Did I say console? Somebody yeah, beat no. me up quickly. I meant <laughs> PC. Ooh, Ooh fuff, let it out, bag of Making an extra system. <laughs> yeah. So that's where my gaming starts. So, Chuck, I know Chuck, you're up against the clock here, so we'll keep this one. Uh, we'll keep this one up fairly quick. Yeah, I think I've got ten minutes to go. You're the so the, you're the. Uh, animation manager so lead animator should i say and the manager what is it yep. how does it actually start to end do you have a, a meeting with the squad devs and say do you know what we need an animation for this how does it work and then you just go off and get on with it what's the process in, involved in all that okay yeah well um basically uh everything that uh, starts starts with uh with us looking at um say like the feature roadmap and what sort of big um, like use like usability feature or or some sort of um, like uh, gameplay target we want to hit. So if if it's say uh, anything to do with 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 player interaction and, and animation, so let's say uh, let's say vaulting for example, um, if it we we sort of decide as a team, okay, we want to work on this, and then the program is basically create um, uh, create accommodations for uh, for for the animators to drop in, uh, yeah, things like uh, like animation assets, um, and uh, like we basically go off uh, as in the animators go off and and and, and you know uh, we uh, can approach the process in like one or two ways I guess um, uh, of, of of animation. So uh, one is uh, what's called keyframe animation, which is um, completely uh it's completely hand done I, I mean like it's kind of weird when you when you call a 3d animation hand done but that um is uh i do a lot of you know cinema 4d yeah. is it similar to that sort of thing obviously yours you're yeah, using different yeah. tools exactly yeah yeah well um in cinema 4d do you have uh, do you have say say like like a rig skeleton and and, and you basically i was going to ask you, know, you about that you know when you've got when you've actually got say uh, a model that creates the model of a uh, one of the soldiers do you yeah. actually build a, a skeleton rig around that is that how it's animated yes is, that, is it the same process yeah yeah same process um like uh we have a common like uh like 
bipedal human rig that we use for for all our soldiers and um and like uh we yeah we sort of uh keyframe it so so it's like every you know maybe second or third frame we uh we so so like set a new position for for for, for the bones and limbs or yeah, whatever yeah. and then we basically um like animate a jump for example or a vault uh from from start to finish by hand uh and and, and that and that's you know a, a fairly like tedious process where where uh yeah it can be tedious or or enjoyable depending on on like which way you you look at it but uh, but yeah, that's that's sort of one way of, of doing it. The the other uh, approach that that we, we have within the animation team is um, uh, is using is using motion capture data, uh, and this is actually a fairly recent thing that uh, that uh, that one, once I joined the team, I, I had to actually learn. Um, like we basically get like uh, mocap data from from either large um, like uh, royalty free databases, like like there's there's sites out there that have like thousands and thousands of um of like pre-recorded uh motion capture data that people can just download for free yeah, and yeah. um and and uh and like you know uh, adapt to their film or or game um and i basically get i i search this library and, and it's like okay i need to look for a jump i need to look for 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 uh, animation where uh, where the guy is like vaulting over a wall or something like that and uh, i take that and i uh, I, I basically break it down into keyframes, um, and then I edit it by hand from, from yeah, there yeah. To, to, until we get what we what, uh, until we get to to a stage where okay, this can be th- dropped into the game. Yeah, it's funny you say about vaulting. Actually, is that going to be something that's implemented? Do you know, I was going to mention that as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because honestly, them walls make their killers. <laughs> the, the, those twelve foot inch high walls. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. every every time I I watch gameplay and and, and it's like someone is, is like try, it's like okay they look like they're gonna jump over a wall, I I, I hold my breath because like oh no like there's no volume system in the game yet I think they're gonna just just like jump a few times and lose stamina and not even get over the wall. The it's worse when you you know when you see the enemy the across the field you go running across and you end up doing a, what is it a Mario Kart you jump up a couple of times and go sod it I'll have to walk all the way around <laughs> yeah. just to get this wall. Sod, yeah. <laughs> That's something that issues you got. It was me and uh, Dr. Big Money playing around on Core the other night, the, uh, the squad league administrator guy. And uh, <laughs> I'm leading the squad, and we're like running up to Riverside, the, the actual cat point up there. And uh, he, I looked back at my map. I was like, uh, Money, what are you doing right there, man? He's like, I can't get over this wall. And he's like, sitting there jumping up and down. <laughs> I'm too fat. My legs yeah. can't bend. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm playing a Russian faction. We got nukes, but we can't jump over low mud brick walls. <laughs> I know it's yeah, on, yeah. The, on the forums, Chuck. Um, I may have read this wrong. I need to go back and do my research a little bit more. There was a thing about optimization versus the animation thing. Is that anything you can talk about at this stage, or is that all behind closed doors? Um, I guess I can talk about it on a service level because um, it, it's 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 something that that uh, that's actually heavily involved with with the, with the programmers. Um, like if you if you think about about the the separation between between the programmers and, and the art team, like I'm very much within the, the art side of things, where yeah. uh, where I'm like I'm, I'm I'm more creating actual uh, visual assets rather than the framework to make those visual assets play, you know? Yeah. Um, you, yeah. But but um, uh, but like what's uh, the the problem we we've been having we've been experiencing actually since uh, since the early days of, of Squad and even up to now is that um, the animation system we have in place um, at this very moment uh, is actually Created um, in a format that's not native to Unreal Engine Four, so right. Unreal Engine Four currently has its own way of playing back animations, its own animation. Um, uh, they call it animation montage, and and, and yeah. it's, uh, it's it's basically a framework for for for, for people to to create uh, like um, like uh, things called state machine systems, where where like it, say if you were to press forward uh, like um, it's it's a sort of like 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 map uh, like, like a mind map where where the where the system um, can can figure out the logic uh, of whether a character is is doing such and such and then what animations to play and what animations to overlay uh, when, when when a certain action is done. Um, after all that though, uh, what we're using currently doesn't use that, <laughs> and, and, and 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 because of that. Um, like uh, there's a lot of, of redundancies and um, like unnecessary calculations being done both yep. on the client side and on the server side. 
Um, that so far has been alleviated quite a bit because uh, our, our our very talented programmers have have, um, have gone in and, and and like you know uh, streamlined it all. Most of it. yeah, yeah, that's right. Optimized um, most of it. Yeah. But uh, a big consequence of that is that um, adding new stuff to the animation system is extremely hard. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I guess as a as a as a consequence of that, we uh, we we've decided to to really pretty much um, like rip the whole thing out and and, and, and try again from scratch. Uh, except that it's going to be a very long term sort of process. And um, like uh, uh, another really weird side effect of, of of development, especially when you're dealing with like an engine that's constantly evolving, is that um, when we started, uh, we had to we, we for some reason made made the decision to create all our animation assets at uh, half scale. So, um, the, so like if you were to grab uh, whatever whatever animation asset, like say a reload or or, or yep. a character running, yep. and drop it into the engine, the character will play back as in the the, the scale of the guy will be at half scale. So he he would be what like. Uh, like three feet tall. <laughs> Midget yeah. squad. Ah, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Midget. That's got to be a mod, surely. It's got to be a mod. Yeah, I know, I know. And and, and because of that, it, it, it's creating all this, all these issues where like our vehicles and environments and and everything else is at full scale, whereas our, except for our dudes who are like yeah, who, who are basically midgets. So and, that would and, affect like, the physics, I presume. Then I, I, every it affects everything. Yeah, and, and yeah. Like, um, and uh, it, it's, it's creating a lot of a lot of uh, headaches for for our uh, for our coders where say uh, they want to implement vehicles, for example, but 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 then it's like suddenly they have to deal with this. Uh, this strange hurdle of like having to double the size of the character where, whenever like you enter a vehicle, for example, or, yeah. or, or whatever else. It's 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 a big headache currently, and and um, uh, and as a consequence of us uh, making everything right again, where yeah. we um, basically rescale all the animations and characters back to full scale. Uh, as, as, sorry, as, as a consequence of that, we have to actually recreate all the animation assets from from scratch again. Quite a big, yeah, uh, quite a lot then. It, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of work to be done, and uh, but but like um, I, I guess in, in certain degree, like uh, uh, what we have currently uh, off of release is is you know obviously very much playable, and and um, yeah, and like uh, people you know are uh, are really enjoying the game in in its in, in its current state. Obviously, there there's you know lots we can do with with like quality of life and uh, and other such improvements, but um, like from from like a uh, like like a really base level where 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 we're really tinkering with with things um, at, at at its core, like the, the animation system is it's going to be one of those fundamental changes that, yeah. that that's going to happen over the next few months. Yeah, uh, I'm really conscious of time because I know you've got to go, so I'm just going to ask you two questions, and you can yep. say no comment if you want to on both of them. Uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask is. Um, is there anything in the pipeline coming for the server st stability? Because it seems something's happened since we went to Steam. The servers are, seem to be going down a lot. I don't know whether that's something you're aware of or whether it's server side or is it game side. If you've, uh, if you've got no comment, Chuck, just say no comment at this stage. Yeah, that's not my area of, of right. expertise. But, but I, I do know that, um, that, yeah, I mean, there is actually a, a, a patch that works. And... Um, right. and uh, I'm not sure whether you would directly address that, but uh, yeah, I know that there's a lot of server side stuff being, being done. Well, it was just a general, really, just to you know. Obviously, I presume you guys have discussed it or know it's an issue. That's that's enough, I think, for us yeah. at the minute. It's just to know whether you guys know about it. And um, right, last question, Chuck. Can you tell us what you're working on now, yay or nay? Just out of <laughs> interest. Uh, I can, I, I, I can, I, get, I, I mean, probably for like, you know, 20 seconds, but, but like, everybody's um, turning up the podcast right now. Yeah. Go yeah, on. yeah. I, I'm basically, uh, uh, at, at the very start of, of like the rescaling, um, that's yep. at the, at the reanimation, uh, uh, sort of gigantic task. So, so like, um, I basically have, have, have created uh, the, the like the pipeline for 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 making new animation assets at full scale, um, with with like all the lessons that, that I've learned over the past year. So um, like it's it's nothing you know exciting for for like you know you guys uh, yeah. where where 
where you know it's not it's not as, as exciting as say like a new weapon or or, or like oh uh, I'm, I'm like doing animations for this new for like a, I don't know, a dragon feature or something like that it's it's it, it's more like you know behind the scenes pipeline sort of stuff Right, because we were hoping you were going to undo your dressing gown and give us a little bit of a tidbit. <laughs> uh, can, can, can you tell us anything at all about what we might see in the next update? Um, definitely a lot of really exciting map updates. Uh, like like the, 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 the mapping environment team have gone, uh, are doing a phenomenal job in, in you know, expanding the, the playful areas and creating yep. new, uh, new, new gameplay layers yep. uh, as well. Right, sweet. Anybody want to ask him anything yep. really quickly because I know he's got to go? No, no, no not, let's not waste any more time for Chuck. That's um, good information. Yeah, yep. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks a lot, much. Chuck. It's a real privilege for us uh, to have one of the developers in. As you, I'm sure you're aware, we all absolutely love Squad to Death, and uh, it's only going to get better and better. So thank you very much for coming, and hopefully we'll see another one of the devs next week. All right, my pleasure. See you. Thanks, thanks you're welcome. Thank see you, you later, much, Chuck. Right, lads, we can all breathe now. We can all swear and uh, slag the game off as much as we want. No pressure go. now, yeah. Fucking squatty go. shite. I've got to go yeah. change the text now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, lads. So uh, we're going to talk about just a few things that I've seen on the forum that have come up a few times. And uh, one of them was how a vehicle is going to affect squad. Now, I got used to At the beginning, when we first came in on the uh, pre-alpha, I used to be like, fucking hell, I've got to run miles here. And uh, I'll be honest with you, sometimes... I just sit on the death screen, you know, when you're about to respawn. I wait for some poor sod squad leader to run halfway across the map and put a rally point down, and then I'd be like, ah, now I'm in. But I've got used to it now, you know, going in between, because we all know it works with the fobs and the rally points and all that. I do wonder now whether bringing vehicles in is going to completely change gameplay, whether it's going to become too quick, if that makes sense. What do you think? Uh, I think it's I think... really going to slow it down, I I agree completely. You, you said about the, the run, you know, the initial run out the base. I really like that time. You get your squad settled, you get your introductions done, you start making out your plans. I think with the vehicles coming, it's going to put, it's going to slow things down a lot personally. I think people are going to become a lot more cautious because they've got assets to protect. They're going to, um, that whole running into contact when you're trying to get to an objective, it's, it's, I think it's going to be gone. I mean, well, I'm looking forward to the change they're going to bring, but... Yeah. You see, now like you've said that. Right the, the match we had the other night that we were in, I remember saying during that match, can you imagine if there was those couple, there was like three cornfields almost like down in that sort of a bit of a valley, and I said, can you imagine if there was a Humvee or one or two Humvees at the far end with 50 cows just blitzing up down them fields all the infantry at the other end of that field would be on the belt buckles. It would have completely changed that aspect of the game. Uh, you know, oh, I think I think on certain yeah, maps as well. You know, there'll be vehicles that literally, like you know, on Samari, at them alleyways will be. You will not move down there without a vehicle seeing you. If, if it's like bloody Fallujah. Wasn't it too? Uh, yeah, exactly right. Wasn't yeah, right. right. too? Correct so, me if I'm wrong. I mean, uh, um, especially with the, the, the on foot movement too. Uh, if, like I said, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought I saw something too about movement speed being like slowed down a little bit when vehicles come out too as well. Yeah, the sprint is going to be decreased. So I think, by that's going to, yeah, that's going to take a take a big hindrance on that too. So it's definitely, obviously, going to slow the game down itself just because of that. But um, well, I mean, if, if you come across well. a vehicle with with like, as an infantry squad, you're going to have to slow it down. You're going to have to, you know, Absolutely. smoke it. Boom, go to the next street. Smoke it. Boom, go to the next street. It's going to slow yeah. it down. I was just worried that they were going to put a Humvee at the top of the, the highest peak on each map. Mm. And just dominate everything. I mean, dominate all kinds of RPGs. That's who's going to dominate. Well, yeah. Um, is it going to increase Lone Wolf as well? You know, just jumping out. Ah, now we talk about this. Uh, like the bane of PR too. People stealing. Yeah. Like, just, yeah. Just using taxis or lodges as, trans as a taxi. You know, it's going to happen too. No, I. It's going to happen. I spoke to one of the devs on a private PM, uh, asking a question about this, and it's going to be a little bit like Project Reality, where the squad leader will allocate a driver. Right, so if if I'm a squad leader and I give it to Blitz, Rossi can't drive that vehicle unless bl right. unless Blitz goes down, and it also means ah. that Squad Two, none of the little plebs in Squad Two, can jump in our Humvee and fuck off with it, because you know what used to happen in the old Battlefield games was you, you'd drive your Humvee off somewhere, right? You'd get a nice kill zone, right, and you jump on fifty cal, and everybody else at vehicle would get out and you know go capture the flag. Some cod pleb had come in. <laughs> Jump in driver's seat, piss off into middle of action, you both get killed by a tank, job done. Yeah. 
bastards. Or, or a helicopter. You know, or he smashes it into a fucking wall. Yeah, because they think it's a bloody taxi. But, 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 they're off. Yeah. Oh, it, well, it is, though, isn't it? It is, though, isn't it, to him? Exactly right. It's but exactly you can't do it. That's what they're saying. They, they won't allow it to do it. And, in, and if I remember, I haven't played PR for a while now. If you take a Humvee, our squad, and it's destroyed by RPG, you don't get another one for 20 minutes. It doesn't it's, layer, but yeah. Because that stops you just, like I said, going out, using it to blitz some gets blown up, don't matter, we'll get another one, we'll just respawn it. No, it don't work like that. Yeah, it definitely needs a time limit to them. But, I mean, you know, the first week when they get implemented, I think you'll see a lot of a, a lot of shit that happens. There'll be a lot of bollocks that happens, to be fair. And then, you know, it'll calm down just like it done with when it, you know, squad released on Steam. Well, After yeah, because everybody wants down. to get in and play with the new toys, that's what it exactly. is. Yeah, exactly right. Listen, look, let's, let's not make... Not fucking piss around there vehicles are going to change this game completely and it's going to bring a new aspect that everyone's going to have to deal with tactic wise maneuver wise squad wise you know it's it's going to completely put the game on its head and it's it's going to be some it's going I mean, to be a major major especially when logistics falls behind it yeah, yeah that's what course. i was going to say yeah. i was going to say yeah. what, rather than having a vehicle that can attack with a you know a 50 cal or whatever why not try and implement the the, the origins of logistics you know a, tra- a troop transport rather than because then you can't really do much of a troop transport, do you know what I mean? You can't take it into the thicker shit and just, you can't kill anyone with it. So it's like, if they, they should do it in stages, really, but they know what they're doing. Do you so. know that, because there will be, I think I don't think it was Ian uh, last week was saying that if when it comes to the uh, transport stuff, he will absolutely love it. He said, all I want to do for the whole game, right, is get all the guys in the back of the truck, drive into combat, drop them off, and then come back to base and wait. And for him, that's, that's his emerging factor with squad. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the same power up, but as soon as them attack helicopters come in, I'm going to be sitting there and I'm waiting for the radio call to go in and, and start strafing. Running chaos, yeah. yeah. You, know, you know it'll come, blitz from me, mate. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> 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 Fucking Rossi's fucked up again. Get that flying bastard down here. <laughs> but I'm the, you, you, you're totally right, and people are looking for that aspect of the game. Um, I bring it on, that's what I say. Well, I love Euro Truck Simulator too. It's the same thing over and over again, but I love it. it it's the same thing. But going back to PR again, the very first game of PI I had, I was on the 50 cal on a Humvee, right? And um, it took some uh, 50 cal shots to the front, and the wheel was smoking, nothing major. And they drove all the way back to base, and I was saying on comms, what the fuck are you doing? He went, if we lose this, it's 20 minutes. This could, you know, aye, that aye. one vehicle, like everything else in squad, could lose you the game. Aye. Yeah. It's, a totally, it's a totally different layer, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. not just flags and fobs and, and tickets. Yeah. You have got to think about your assets. It's a, it's a good. It's a yeah. good thing think about your ass. Yeah, that's, yeah. Right. that's yeah. right, Rossi. Yes. Yes. Don't, don't yes. think about my ass. Yeah. Your assets, baby. Right. Let's move on to the next topic then. The next topic I've seen on the forum quite a lot for people asking is free look like armor, and I would absolutely love this. Look what you guys think. Yeah, I think it's in a pipeline, mate. I think it's going to happen. Oh, virtual reality. I don't know how that's going to work, though. No, no I don't think like, so. Track IR. Yeah, track IR, yeah, I think, would, would be good. Might not be running. Yeah, yeah there, there's nothing wrong with Armour's free look. You know, I, don't, I wouldn't complain if that was the sort oh, of standard I, we're looking at. I love it. I, just, especially when you've got the RPK or something and you're in prone on top of a compound. Just, I just want to press that left alt key and just have a little look left and Check right. Check over your shoulder. Sure. Yeah, that would just be awesome. Uh, Right, another topic we've got is recoil. Now, I think I touched a little bit on this last week, but for me, as a support class, I still feel, even in prone, the IPK and the saw's got too much recoil. I don't know what you think, because I remember Battleborn, um, who's one of the red coats, has actually used that weapon in combat, and uh, even even he said it's got too much recoil, you know. I don't know what you guys think about recoil in general. I mean, more, in, more I haven't less. used that class much, the LMG, so I can't really say much. But in general, for yes, people, I think it's pretty, you know, it's pretty all right. I wouldn't, I don't know if it's realistic, but it feels pretty, yeah. pretty good. There's I some things I've kind of, I've kind of got mastered down already, especially with the AKs. I can shoot laser beams over that thing. And... Yeah, but you, well, you I, say I, that, I, though. I mean, it, it's, it swings around about, isn't it? If I'm um, running around with RPK hands, I can't hit jack shit. Yeah. To be well, that's also you. that's also kind of what it's for. It's not really meant to be completely accurate. Yeah, true. Yeah. You know, that, that comes down to playing the roles correctly. Um, well, I mean, so. if you look at your video, para plug, um, when you suppress them them guys in the trees with your LMG, it's pretty spot on, mate. I don't know how hard that was to keep that accurate. But, well, mean, you, you just got to do you know it. short bursts because otherwise, if I was to put you know a massive brrr down there, I'd break my spine. 
because I'll be, shoot, I'll be shooting seagulls. Do you know what I mean? It points but like straight I said, too, that's also, that's also kind of inherent with the role. Like, you play the, you play the AR, it's not supposed to be precisely shooting laser beams. You know, you want to put that volume of fire out so those, those people can't move. That's kind of what it's for. But I, I, I see what you're saying, though. But it's like the, 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 is it the AK? Is it the SU? The one where you get the RPG as well. I forgot yeah, which one it is. Terrible. I fuck. See, you know what I mean. I love that weapon. Up close I love that thing too, man. I know about you. Yeah, I love that weapon up close. It's monster. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say anything over two hundred meters. Then I won't bother. I'll just you know blow the shit out of them with an RPG. But <laughs> yeah, that oh man, I could just full burst on that. I love the sound on it as well. I think it's ace that weapon. Yeah, the sound in general of, of the game is fucking spot on. I'm pretty sure we said this last week yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah we like, did, yeah. Big shout out again to that. That's, that's I'll say it every week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> big up the Anders. What? Don't what? talk in the same <laughs> shit. <laughs> Cold to the Anders. I just wish there were more screaming in pain and agony, but that's just me. I'm sadistic, I think. I am. Um, I, I don't really touch the LMG anymore. I used to like bitches up all the time on it in the close pre-alpha. I don't really touch it now. I find the recoil generally is actually fine on most weapons. Um, you know, the, the AKs, the M4, I actually think they're fine. It's just all about learning it and, and how to control that weapon in that situation. Mm, yeah, because I remember when we first yeah. came in on pre-alpha, I thought, this is shocking. Recoil's ridiculous. I can't even get one kill now. I guess we've just got used to it. Yeah. yeah. yeah don't forget when bipods, get, you know, when bipods get implemented and the whole you know, cover system will we'll get implemented, it will change that completely, so... Yeah. You've got to put that in perspective as well, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think about the mods giving squad SDK? And for those of you out there who don't know what the SDK is, it gives uh, the community the opportunity to create mods, which if they meet a certain criteria or a certain standard, I would presume, then the devs will actually put it, I'm guessing, on a Steam Workshop uh, for integration, whether that's going to split the community somewhat, because obviously if you're putting certain mods in and other people haven't got it, uh, I mean, two minds on this. If it was a real quality thing, well, obviously the devs are progressing squad forward. If there was a, a real good community mod group that, say, did World War Two or Vietnam, I would definitely be up for it. Yeah, I mean, last week I did, I did, um, you know, talk about armor, and I'm probably going to do it again. Uh, I'm on armor, you know, the community in armor is split completely. You have to have 50 mods just to play a, a decent round yeah. of multiplayer. Like, I don't want squad like, to ever go down that road. That's bollocks. Yeah. But you feel like a developer just getting the game to run. Yeah, but like you said, if it was if it was like DLC kind of like in terms of an actual World War Two complete, you know, that'd be great. I'd, I'd yeah. you know I'd squad pay at for war that or shit. something. I yeah, mean, I'd, wait, I'd pay I'm, for that. You know what I mean? Unless it was like you're going through the server list, which I, I hope one day we can have favorites and put it in alphabetical order. But that's another moan. <laughs> I hope one day we'll be able to uh, go through the list and it'll say squad World War Two mod. I haven't downloaded any mods, right? So I just click on that. It would launch the game and automatically, you know, start to download the mods for you. That would be a nice way of doing it. Automatically it, yeah. on the same squad screen. So as in, I don't need to go to a separate website, you know, start creating mod folders and all that shite you usually have to do. Mm. If it was simply like that, I think that'd be good. Yeah, but mods available on, a, on an official format... It's fine for me personally, because as you've just said, click on the server and you're loading up. I think yeah. when you start getting to the point of, you know, Rossi mentioned armor there, of, you know, one server needing four mods, and, and, and people start getting split because you'll find that's all they play is that one server. Just hit that well, all yeah. the time. Yeah. And they don't get the exposure anywhere else to any sort of different mods. So if you have an official form of, of, um, of mods with loads of content in it, and it, it's opened up to... The community, I, I think that's a, a very good uh, uh, incentive. Yeah. I just think we'll end up with SWAT. What else will there be? Oh, you know what the community is all going to start doing? Oh, zombies. Oh, God, oh, no. Yeah. Forget zombies. Zomb fuck that, zombies. A, I, I, knew, I knew I was going to get to this point. That can, a part of my French, oh. that can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, Somebody, posted, donkey. Somebody posted on the forums, like, I think it was the other day, like just joking about, like, oh, squad, epoch, my, like. And immediately, oh, there's like 20 different posts, like, suicide. Oh, my eyes are bleeding, I can't think about that. Like, Suicide bomb donkeys. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's an idea. Put the bombs in the little baskets. It, on, it, on. it goes wandering in. Kaboom. And the sombrero <laughs> comes down after in the mushroom cloud. Oh, now, there's a mod waiting to happen. The goat shepherd. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's I mean, things like night vision for the night maps might be quite cool. Or lasers. Hmm. Uh, yeah. 
I don't know, somebody was talking on the forum, I know it's about, um, what was it? Napalm or something or other. Uh, was it Napalm? Oh, no, I think it was the 203 gunner actually having smoke instead of, uh, you know, like, it's basically now it's marker smoke, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. To be able to uh, put smoke down on a hill. But that would be cool if it then came into, like, armour, you know, the Ace mod where there's actually wind in game. So you would oh, put yeah. the smoke upwind and all that sort of shite. But whether that's way down the line or whether it'll even happen, I have no idea. I'm not sure they haven't really said much about it. Maybe they have, we just haven't, we just don't know about it. Yeah, maybe so. Right, is there anything else you lot want to talk about? Anything you've noticed on the community forums or anything like that? I mean, we can talk about, I see one earlier about an incentive for winning. I mean, we could keep it for next uh-huh. week if you want, or we could do it now. It's, the it's incentive nice. for winning? No, I just love being a loser, Rossi. Yeah, no, no, like, no, people are talking about basically like a badge system where you've won X amount of games, like... I just... Um, oh, God, no. If we're going to start talking about kill-death ratios, forget no, it. Not, not, not interesting. Not, it's, it's basically... Yeah, that's why... I, you can see my comment on it. I've commented on it. But it's basically like a badge to say you've won this amount of games. And I was just like, why? Like, I just no point to it. It just yeah, seems probably, a little bit vomit train that to me. It's just... It's, it's, this new, it's this new, like, genre of fast-paced shoot, give up, go, you know, twitch shooter. Yeah. It's like, I've, I've, been, I've, sit, I've like been a medic and I've sat there and said, do not give up. I'm medicing you. And someone's like, nah, nah, fuck that, I'm giving up. Like, Your oh, medic right. revive rate, Rossi, is 12 over 6, point whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a man. That, 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 that post on a spreadsheet. Off, talking about rankings. That's how that post started. They were talking about yeah. you know, having a rank oh, system. God, no. Everyone was just like, yeah, no, like that's squad not... members and squad leads, like ranking like squad leaders, like 1 out of 10 or whatever. Yeah. It was. Oh, rank 20, sure Doc gets rubber Pretty gloves. Sure. So, oh, God, no. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Leopard I mean, that's, skin AK. I think it's too gimmicky to me. I think a few people said, look, if that's what you're after, you need to go somewhere else. I, I made a post that said, do you need your boss to tell you every day in work that you're doing a good job? No. You know it. You've so just why do you need the, the fucking the, recognition in a game? You've got to it's, have the community so on the forums. Don't start shouting and there's more and more and more until the devs go, actually. No, please, God, no. no. Don't listen. I don't, I don't think they will, mate. I, you know, I think they know what they are. Well, they do in PR. And, and we, yeah, they're in each <laughs> game and whether it becomes big time or not, I, th- I think it will become big time personally. But I still think it will fit that niche. It will always yeah. be niche, I think. Well, there's a, lot of us in, sure. there's a lot of us in now know that this is still alpha, whereas the, the, there are quite a few people who are coming in from Steam thinking, where the fuck is everything? Oh, I, yeah. think, I honestly think that when tanks, BTRs and helos come in, it, this game will go thermally up, Definitely. nuclear. It'll just... It's going to be a completely different game, especially when logistics comes in. The vehicles alone is going to yeah. be a huge, huge difference, but then as soon as yeah. logistics drops, is people are going to have to relearn. Yeah, I'm going to relearn the game again. On point. Yeah, everyone's going yeah. to have to relearn the game completely. I mean, for the start, myself, that's, I'm going to have to completely change the way I approach a game completely. Exactly. And myself. Yeah, 50 cal, 50 cal, 50 that's cal. All, that's, that's all I want is 50 cal. Cal. <laughs> oh, I just want to blow heads off. Oh. Just wants to, yeah, just wants to shoot people. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually <laughs> sick this. bastard. I, I got an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, lads. Sort of unless group. there's anything else, we'll wrap that up because it looks like this one's running a little bit. But it's good to talk to um, Chucky Egg or Little Chucky, as I call him. I don't, yeah, I, don't I just made that up. Uh, <laughs> the Chuckster, <laughs> big up the Chuckster for uh, sparing some time because I know he's got a meeting with the rest of the devs and they're going to be. Uh, Tip tapping away with the rest of the nerds. Oh, they're going to be hounding. They're going to be hounding him. What you've been asking yeah. him? What's yeah. Him? And I'm going to get banned because I call <laughs> them all nerds. NDA, you can't say it. <laughs> anyway, lads, thanks for turning up. I've been paraplaced. With me has been Blitzer, Doc East, and the infamous. It talked about. Oh, he's not here. Oh, and Rossi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we shall see. It. <laughs> yeah. We shall see you for next week. For well, actually, I won't put a time on it. Let's just say in the next episode, episode three, we'll have a surprise for you, lads. I haven't got a surprise, but it's going to keep them up. <laughs> yeah, big surprise, a big announcement yeah, a big next week. We've got some Sal? insider information, yep. so keep them thumbs up, right just, up the red rossi ass, and we shall see you next week. <laughs> see you guys. Yeah. Adios, bye bye. <laughs> Say bye bye, grumpy bastards. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Ta-da. That was better, man. Yeah.